Remember these guys, the Republican young guns? In 2010, they were the boy band generation of Republicans who were going to change the party. You know, Paul Ryan of the P90X flexing, you know, he was the cute one. And Kevin McCarthy was the tax-loving, sensitive one. And Eric Cantor was the bad boy. They rounded out a group that would fuse Tea Party politics with wonky policies. And, well, you know how that worked out. Ryan and McCarthy ultimately lost their leadership roles. Cantor couldn't even win a re-election primary. Now, instead of boy bands, House Republicans are a bunch of proud boys. Gun-loving MAGA extremists like Jim Jordan, Marjorie Taylor Greene, and Lauren Boebert, who post memes instead of actually passing laws. Now, heading into the 2024 election, it looks like nobody wants to hear their tired old songs anymore. Yesterday, Boebert confirmed she is switching from her purple Colorado district to a deep red one in hopes of winning re-election. That is after she was nearly knocked off by her Democratic challenger last year. What would we say about the future of the Democratic Party if prominent members like Eric Swalwell or AOC had to go district shopping in order to stay in power? Long-term California Congresswoman Maxine Waters currently serves as the top Democrat on the House Financial Services Committee. She joins me now. Thank you so much, Congresswoman Waters. Uh, I have to start with this. You have served in office. You have advised presidents. You have seen ups and downs of the Democratic Party. If, if, if Eric Swalwell, if AOC, if, if you had to go district shopping in order to get reelected, what would that be saying about the state of the Democratic Party? Well, it would be saying that uh, we are not capable of representing the districts where we have started out, and now we want to switch, and we go look for something else. Maybe we would get uh, elected in a different district, but Bopart is not going to get elected in a different district. She was caught publicly uh, vaping, mm -hmm. and not only was she doing that, she was being groped, she was being felt on uh, by the boyfriend. Now, this is a representative of the United right. States of America who has the audacity to talk about caring about children and education and families. Even if she goes to a new district that is more conservative, I think those conservative members of those districts will understand that this is not someone that they want to serve as a representative for them because of what she is transporting to their parents, to their children. You know, yeah. it's interesting. She, she's trying to go into Ken Buck's former district. Yes. And, and Ken Buck was one of the Republicans saying, hey, we're not getting anything done. He was tired of people like Lauren Boebert. As someone who's worked with presidents and gotten things done, somebody who talked down Donald Trump and worked with Barack Obama, worked with member, what is it like being in a Congress right now that can't seem to get anything done? I, I mean, this is the, the least productive House of Representatives session in, since 1989. Only 20 bills passed and signed into law. What's that like for you who's so used to actually getting things done in Congress? Well, actually, it's pathetic on the Republican side. Mm -hmm. They can't govern. Uh, they're in disarray. It is chaotic. It is pitiful. Out of, you know, 700 votes or so, they got, what, 27 votes all year, and only 26 of them were passed. And so they're incapable of directing and running this government. And so they're in deep trouble. And if they think somehow that is not going to be understood uh, by the American public and they're going to win because they're all hiding behind Donald Trump, it's not going to happen. We're going to take back the House for sure. I have to ask you this, because one of the things that, that you often hear political analysts, pundits, journalists talk about is, where is the enthusiasm going to be for the Democratic Party? You are probably one of the most well-known members of Congress on either side of the party. Um, you are memed. You are known by, yes. by, by older voters and younger yes. voters and everything else like that. What do you think your role will be in 2024 when it comes to speaking to those people who are disenchanted, speaking to those people who say it's a pox on both houses, the Democrats can't get anything Republican? What are you going to say to those people next year to make sure that they turn out and vote so that the House can get back in the hands of One Democrats? of the things I think we need to do is remind people of what we have done and what Democrats have accomplished and what Biden has done. We did a remarkable job doing COVID, making sure that people had food on the table. Don't forget the people. PPP loan that we created in order for small businesses to have an opportunity to keep their personnel and to keep those doors open. So Biden has done a great job. And for the young people, 
What do you think has happened uh, to the debt that they owe uh, because of their student loans? He's reduced that. He's working at it. Uh, and he's done a good job. He really has been a strong Democrat who has delivered. And he's promised a lot, and he's delivered a lot. And for black people, he has certainly delivered. I tend to be skeptical when yes. I see all these numbers that say, oh, black folks are voting for Trump. I don't buy it. I, I, I don't know a lot of African-Americans. I don't know a lot of black folks. I don't know a lot of anybody who says that they're voting for Trump. Uh, when you hear those kinds of things, when you hear it said by serious journalists and everything else like that, that, that black people, in particular black men, are, are moving to the Republican Party, is that what you're seeing on the ground? Is that what you see in L.A.? No, I hear a little bit of that. Mm -hmm. uh, but sometimes I think that's done to create controversy. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that people want to see uh, if, you know, young people are going to, you know, start to talk like they're talking about supporting Trump. It's not going to happen. Black people understand who their friends are. Black people understand what Trump has done in dividing and conquering, and that he's aligned not only with the KKK, uh, but with the Proud Boys, with the Oath Keepers, uh, with the QAnon. These are domestic terrorists who are out not only to undermine our democracy and disregard the Constitution, and they are going to be happy Young people are going to be happy to elect someone that they said wants to... He said he wants to be a dictator. I don't think so. When it gets down to it, black people are going to turn out in large numbers. Young people are going to turn out in large numbers. And I want to tell you uh, that independents are going to turn out because they know that this man who loves Russia, mm -hmm. who loves dictators, who loves Putin and speaks up for him and who's aligned with him is not good for this country or our democracy. I always love, always love talking to the Congresswoman <laughs> Maxine Waters. Thank you so much for joining us this evening on All In.